Knife skills are the most important thing you will learn in the kitchen. Especially if you want to keep your bodily parts intact. We are going to go through the important do's and don'ts first. Oh. While you still have all your fingers, please please, subscribe, like, and share, to support our charity. Thank you. Always use the correct knife for the task at hand. Some knives are only any good for a certain job and can be dangerous used in the wrong way. So, for example, a filleting knife is very specific and the long sharp blade can cause a serious injury if it slips because it is being used for everyday cutting. Try to cut away from yourself. Working away from where you hold the food means you are much less likely to cut your fingers. Always cut on a clean cutting board. Aside from cross-contamination, a dirty board can be slippy and cause an accident. Do not cut on glass, marble or metal, this includes plates, these can be slippy and are likely to cause an accident. If you place a wet towel underneath the cutting board it will stop it sliding about. If the board slides you might cut your fingers not the food. Keep knives sharp, a blunt knife is more dangerous than a sharp one. You need to put more force on a dull knife and it will drag and catch on the food. This can cause really nasty accidents. When carrying a knife, hold it pointed down, parallel and close to your leg as you walk. Best to fall on the handle and not the blade so point it down in case of a trip. Walking around holding a knife with the blade up could accidentally hurt you, or someone else. It's best to pretend that a falling knife has no handle. Never attempt to catch it, just step back and allow it to fall. People have had very serious injuries from trying to grab the handle. Never leave a knife in a sink of water, or you may end up leaving a finger in there too. Remember, someone who doesn't know it's there, might put their hand directly onto the sharp blade, or you may forget and do the same. Certain tasks use different techniques. Use the tip of the knife for smaller, lighter cutting, chopping or slicing. Use the thick part for larger, heavier work. Start by shaping your hand as if you are about to pinch, resting the tips of your fingers on the food and your thumb behind your fingers. Ensure the foremost part of your hand is your knuckles, not your fingertips. Hold down the food with your little finger and thumb, your other fingers should act as stability and control while you cut. With your knife in the other hand, move the knife in a cutting motion, allowing the knife to brush against your knuckles as you cut. Gently move your claw hand away from the knife as it cuts through the food. The knife should briefly brush against your knuckles, keeping your fingertips protected at all times. Create a tunnel or a bridge using your index finger, middle finger and thumb, placing your fingertips on the sides of the food you're chopping. Arch the palm of your hand up to get the tunnel shape, this creates the perfect slot for your knife. Guide the knife into the tunnel you've created and place the point of the knife on the chopping board. Bring the knife down and pull it back towards you to slice the food. The fingers holding the food will act as a clamp to secure food as it is cut in two. Don't hold the food too tight with this grip, you'll tire your hands out. Grip the food strong enough so that it doesn't move when you cut through it. 